Hey eBayers, it's Suzanne A. Wells and welcome back to another Money Making Monday video. These sales are taken from the November 26th, 2018 thread on my Facebook group. If you are new to this format, the sales covered in this video are posted by real sellers just like you. Every Monday we have a thread on my Facebook group where sellers can post what they found, where they found it, how much they paid for it, and what it sold for. And the objective here is so that everybody can learn from other sellers as far as what kinds of things to sell and um, you know what's what's going on in the real world of selling, not just um, what are people buying that they intend to list. This is the proof of what can sell. Now before we get started a couple of house cleaning items. Christy posted this on the Facebook group a couple of weeks ago talking about her son. She says watching the supersize $100 sales September video in my office. I have a hard time hearing so I have it a little loud and my 16 year old has supersonic hearing. Suzanne is talking about some boots that Lisa sold and I hear my son in the other room chime in good for you Lisa! So, I am doing a shout out to Zachary Kukal. I hope I didn't butcher that name too bad. Um, thank you, Zachary, for cheering us on. And you need to get on you, uh, eBay as well and sell some stuff so we can uh, put that in the group. And I'll do another shout out to you then. So, thanks for watching, or at least listening, Zachary. And then the next item is just real quick, all of my courses that were on my website are now in the premium content library. So the beginner's course, which is about 90 minutes long, all of my clothing courses, the shoe course, estate sales, virtual picking, anything that was on my website has now been moved over. You can access all of that for $20 a month. You can download the classes, keep them on your computer. You can join the library, download everything in it, and never come back if you if you don't want to. That's fine. Um, so that is there for you. It's a lot of material. In addition to everything I'm adding, I am now up to 111 videos and 37 hours of content along with uh, all kinds of other materials and resources you can access. So the link to that is below the video. All right, so that being said, let's get into it. Um, so this thread has 352 comments. Obviously, we're not going to go through everything here, but we're going to give you some items to be aware of that you might find when you're out there because you happen upon these things randomly. I mean, People don't say, oh, I'm going to go to garage sales today and I'm going to look for a Danbury Mint Christmas decoration that will sell for $275. It doesn't work like that. It's just what you happen to see. And all of these people that have found expensive items or that consistently find items, um, it's just it's just chance. Um, you know, they don't set out to find certain things. It's just what's in front of you at the moment. And you just never know. So that's why continuing education, continuing to learn and be aware of what sells is going to help you with your business. And this is an easy way to do it. So we've got Lauren here who has a thrift store find, $6.99, bought it without looking it up because I liked it, sold in about three weeks for full asking price. And here it is, a Danbury Mint item that she sold for $65 sold in about three weeks for full asking price and let's see is it a Christmas decoration it may just be an any time of year decoration but remember Christmas sells all year people that collect this stuff they are into it and they're always looking for it to adding to uh, to add to their collection so if you have it list it Okay, then we've got Catherine who bought this at Goodwill for $4.99, sold for full price plus shipping in two days. And this is uh, vintage Pendleton plaid pants. First I thought they were pajama pants, but they're actual pants. 
and she got $40 for those. So Pendleton is a great brand to sell, especially vintage. Just be careful if it's, um, it will be 100% wool usually if it's Pendleton. Look for moth holes because vintage wool can often have moth holes in them. And the best way to do that is hold it up to the light because sometimes they're very small and there may be a lot of them that are very small. If you hold the item up to the light, you can see those holes better. Okay, Nathan bought this for $15, sold for $73. Took a couple of weeks. And we've got men size 9, New Balance, running shoes size 9, green. So the style number is 990V4, New Balance running shoes. Now that is not a brand that I would actually seek out, but I will now. <laughs> Um, as far as shoes, you know, people seem to gravitate towards Nike or Hoka 1-1 or um, some of the real expensive Asics that have the gel soles. But um, here we go. Check out New Balance. These sold for $73 and he sold them pretty quickly. Okay, we got Catherine here again. Bought at Charity Thrift Store $3.00. Hem needs to be re-sewn. That's why I took best offer of $30 plus shipping. So it's a St. John Collection Santana Knit Black Floral Print Skirt. So she's saying that she sold it defective, damaged, and she still got $30 for it. So $3 investment sold for $30. So she got 10 times her investment on a damaged item. As long as you put in the description that it's damaged, make the buyer fully aware of what they're getting that's totally fine I sell damaged things all the time um, but that is why the money is in the used items because you just you can't make that kind of profit on wholesale or drop shipping in my experience it's very hard because if you can get a supply of something pretty easily that means other people can too and the money comes in the uniqueness of the items. Okay, Jackie, this was mine, just downsizing, sold for $28.93. And let's see what it is here. Let's go to the original item. It is a Spode Casserole Baking Days light blue polka dots with two quart, with lid two quart. So this was just something that was sitting around her house that she wasn't using and she got $28 for it. So uh, Spode is a brand of China dinnerware. Pretty well known for their Christmas patterns. But this nice casserole dish, I would have picked that up in a thrift store as well because um, it's just unusual. It's fun, it's different looking. How often do you see a polka dot casserole dish? Not very often. So this is another example of somebody just cleaning out their home. Um, for those of you who are older, meaning not millennials, <laughs> you have decades of accumulation of stuff in your house that you can sell. So once you get the eBay bug and you get going on this, you're going to see how easy it is to make money on stuff that was just sitting there. Okay, we've got Nathan again, bought for a dollar at Goodwill, sold for $67, took a long time over to sell, I'm sorry, took a long time to sell over a year, but got my asking price, had 24 watchers. So I'm guessing he had this on good till canceled and just left it there, and eventually somebody bought it. So it was a dollar investment and it sold for $67.49. It is a Nintendo video game with box. So this sold in late November, wondering maybe if somebody might have bought it as a gift for someone else who is a uh, Nintendo game um, collector or enthusiast. But this sale speaks to being patient and that's what it takes in this business. Some things will sell immediately as soon as you list them. Other things are going to take a while. So you will be more successful in your business if you have a mix of items uh, from all different 
standpoints as far as different types of inventory, um, items that sell quickly versus items that don't, which are called long tail is what we call items that take a long time to sell. Um, but you want a good diverse mix of items just like you would in a financial portfolio. You want a lot of different types of, um, you know, you want diversity. That's what's going to fuel your business is having a lot of different items. So if you are just doing clothing, it's time to diversify. If you're, you know, just doing uh, glassware, your business will be much more successful if you have a mix of items. Okay, we've got Connie here. She says, if you are a mall shopper like my daughters are, you should be saving your bags, even the tissue, from mall stores like Victoria's Secret. Free to me, and this batch sold for $17.99 with free shipping. So what did she do? She put together a bunch of gift bags in a lot. Pretty Victoria's Secret polka dotty stripey with ribbons bags. And just put them up for sale. And she got basically 18 bucks for those. And she had free shipping, so there was probably a minimal cost on shipping there. So a great example of what some people might consider trash or you know throw that in the recycler or maybe you've got a bunch of these in your closet right now that you save you can sell this stuff you can definitely sell packaging so good job Connie way to be resourceful on stuff that might have just been thrown away okay we've got Jerry bought this VCR DVD combo at an estate sale last weekend for $10. It sold in five days for $90 plus shipping. Most other units were listed at or below $60, but a few sold comps went for higher. This unit had cords, remote, and manual, and I always add a new VHS tapes, uh, sorry, a new VHS tape, and that added value really helps boost the selling price. So he's got his listing here. Let's go to the original item. And there it is. He's got his nice little bundle there with the actual unit and the instructions, the cords, the remote, and he threw in a new tape. That, that's very creative. Um, now the shipping looks high here. I wonder, I must just be because it's heavy. But he said, um, sold in five days. So $10 investment that sold for basically 90 bucks. So he got nine times his investment um, on that one item. That's the way to do it. All right, we've got Jackie again, bought this at an estate sale for $4, sold for $31.50 in about a week. And the brand is J. Jill. Pants, um, black pants, size 12 tall, polyester, viscose, stretchy. Okay, new with tag. So she probably sold these quickly and for a good price, uh, because of the size, 12 tall. Anytime you see talls or short lengths in clothing or wides and narrows in shoes, those are going to sell for a little bit more because there's fewer of them. Okay, here we've got Jerry again, same estate sale, purchased a large lot of new old stock electrical supplies for $40 in one week, have had six sales from that batch totaling $155. Still has 25 more units from that lot for sale. Here's one of the circuit breakers. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is his actual listing and he's selling from this listing in a quantity. So the lot was $40 and he's already had enough sales uh, of $155 with 25 more units to go. So that was a really smart purchase. And we are going to talk with Jerry um, after the holidays coming up in January. I've put my seller interviews on hold for the holidays because, you know, everybody's busy and takes a little time to 
to get together with them and record the interview. So we're going to hear from him on um, his business because he is always selling just really high dollar stuff. Um, as here, he's got some more stuff here. Let's let's move on to something that's not electrical. Uh, this was a fun flip. I scored this entire lot of 32 Goosebumps books for $3 at a yard sale. Their condition was a bit rough. The fun part was that I had received a question. Someone asked me if I would separate eight books from this lot to sell to him. I politely declined, preferring to keep everything together instead of having to redo the whole listing, pictures, etc. Less than 24 hours later, the original lot sold to a different buyer for full price of $60. So this was a $3 investment that he sold for... $60 after being asked to separate it and make it smaller, which, you know, he, he declined. Um, so there's the lot. And again, the name of this uh, series is called Goosebumps. Um, my kids used to read this. Those are fun little books. Um, so another great flip by Jerry. Okay, and we're going to do one more from Jerry and then uh, <laughs> move on. Um, but this one is interesting. This is another part of the ephemeral lot I have mentioned here on Money Making Mondays before. I have pennies in this 1929 zoning ord ordinance bulletin from Edgewater Park, New Jersey. It took about two months, but the right buyer came along and paid $18 plus shipping. Now that doesn't sound so, you know, amazing and exciting. A few pennies into $18, but here's the thing. Um, ephemera, which is basically paper stuff sells and it doesn't just have to be a book it can be anything from the past that people collect or want to buy or want to have so this is just um, a zoning map and like a township booklet that's really old and so the attraction here is the history of these items um, whether it's postcards or matchbooks or sheet music or um, books or documents or um, receipts, all of that stuff sells. So if you're interested in learning about that, I do have a course in the Premium Library about selling ephemera that is a series and I continually add to it. So um, if you want to learn about that, you can go check that out um, and you know get the details and what to look for there. Okay, um, let's move on down and get some different people here. Um, there's George Kelly who always posts. Okay, I wanted to talk about this sale that um, Tony did. Still selling off my Avon haul. I'm not even halfway through and I've sold approximately 103 orders between eBay and Amazon for approximately $2,400 before fees and shipping. This is a great order from this weekend. I initially paid $44 for approximately 2,000 pieces, which was four 33-gallon trash bags full of Avon stuff. I still have a lot to go. I try to separate out the rarer pieces as I come across them. Remember, I only got this deal because I asked the manager for the deal, which she was happy to oblige. Don't be afraid to make them a deal. So... Here we've got her item, which is, um, looks like some eye pencils there. And I'm not seeing, it looks like it is three of them, went for $27.58. And basically she got this giant haul of Avon stuff, and she's just selling it off piece by piece. Um, now we've got another one that is interesting here from Tony paid three dollars sold in about a week for fifty five dollars the other picker in the bathroom overlooked this I gave him first dibs and he grabbed everything but the shaving ephemera which means uh, vintage shaving stuff this is a brush a shaving cream brush and so it was three dollars and she sold it in about a week for fifty five dollars just for a little a little brush but the value is because it's vintage it's old and in her picture she's got a photo of the bottom of the handle that's stamped with um, it's called rubber set aluminum 
that's the name of the brand. So a very interesting piece there for sure. Okay, and continuing on with Tony's estate sale finds, she's got another item from that shaving lot that sold for $55. So she got this item, $5, and it sold for $55. Vintage Gillette Fat Boy Adjustable Razor, 1961. Okay, now, what I want to say here is that Look how resourceful Tony is being, where there was other people in that bathroom looking at stuff to to resell, and they left this, and she still made money on it, and good money. So you've got to go into these sourcing situations with an attitude of abundance. There's, I'm always going to find stuff. There's things here for me. No one can know everything. No one wants to sell everything. So... You know, if your mindset is, well, why should I even bother going to my thrift store? There's never anything there for me to find. You know, somebody is going to be there before me and get all the good stuff. Oh, that estate sale is too crowded. There's not going to be anything left for me. Um, if, if that's your attitude going into these situations, that's what you're going to get. When you look at people like Tony and, um, you know, Casey out in Park City, Utah, who has very limited sourcing, or, you know, George Kelly, who only has about 50 things listed in, in his store at a time, but he just is an amazing seller. Um, these people have learned how to work around other people. And, you know, it's like when they zig, you zag. There is always enough for you. There is enough for everyone. You just have to go into it with that attitude and figure out a different way. There's always a way to success. You just have to figure out a different way sometimes and you have to constantly adapt your business. If something isn't working for you anymore, you got to do something different. You know, don't don't keep going to the hardware store for milk. You're not going to get it there. You got to change it up and do different things. So, I didn't mean to get off on a, you know, preaching it tangent there, but I love to see stuff like this because, you know, me personally, I I go for the perfume and the cosmetics and the vintage medical supplies in at an estate sale. Um, but, you know, Tony made it work. And on both of these items, she, you know, increased her investment by a huge amount. So you just have to, it's, it's all about your mental attitude. It's all about what's going on in your head. And if you you know, put the vibe out there that we live in this extremely abundant country where there's so much stuff that's being thrown away, given away, sold at low prices in thrift stores and garage sales and all that stuff, um, th then you'll, your world will turn around, but it's all about your attitude. So let's look at Tanya. Bought at My Goodwill for $1.99. All glasses are that price at My Goodwill's. Listed on Sunday while watching football and sold Monday on Best Offer. Um, good for her. So let's take a look at what this is. Authentic Oakley Blender Eyeglasses. $63. Um, I keep seeing people doing this and this is something I'm going gonna, gonna to learn in 2019 is selling these eyeglasses because it's the frames that's what they're paying for you know obviously the prescriptions not going to be right for whoever buys it and they don't care um, they're wanting the brand name the high-end designer frames so if you have um, if your thrift store has like you know the baskets or section where there's just a whole bunch of eyeglasses all mixed up together and you're able to have the patience to sit there and look through them and look for the the high-end brand names um, these are great to sell because they're so small to store lightweight and easy to ship um, and I venture to say if it's for eyeglasses they're not going to be returned because once the person gets their prescription put in them they're not going to return that to you after investing the money for the the eyeglass prescription so um, what a great what a great flip $1.99 to $63.99 in just a few days so good for you Tanya 
All right, we've got Stephanie here. Bought this for $32 at a local thrift store and sold it for full asking price in just eight days. So let's see what her asking price was. And we've got vintage 1984 USA Olympic team warm-up suit, blue. Okay, wow, I wonder who's belong, um, who owned this. Like, what athlete was it? Was there a name inside of it? That would be cool. Um, it doesn't have anything, any writing on the tag. Let's see, Stephanie, where are you? You are in Greenwood, Missouri. So it it would be interesting, you know, if we could know everything, what, um, who this belonged to. Um, 1984 warm-up suit, Olympic, went for $139.11, and she paid $32 for it. So how, you know, way to uh, <laughs> get a return on your investment there. That, what a fun item. Okay, we've got Tony again, and she is talking about a huge lot of vintage pencils. First lot sold for $25. Took about two and a half weeks. I have about 50 cents invested into this lot. And let's see what she's got here. Um, vintage 80s Russ novelty pencil toppers. Flocked. Okay, so they're like flocked pencils, like fuzzy. And $25. And her investment was 50 cents. So who knew? Pencils. I mean, that's crazy. But people collect all kind of crazy stuff. Okay, we've got Luann here. She paid a dollar at a yard sale. Sold for $22.99 plus $6.99 shipping. Took two months to sell. To sell. Sorry, I'm tripping over my tongue here. Paid a dollar and it sold for $22.99. And they are Levi's. 511 skinny jean men's size 34 33 so that is a great bread and butter sale that's really what fuels your ebay business are these paid a dollar sold it for 20 to 30 and you just keep doing that over and over again okay rachel whose item is on the thumbnail of this video um, she got the winning spot this time. Bought this at an estate sale for $40. Sold last night for $275 in three hours. So talk about a unique item. Danbury Mint Bichon Frise Dog Christmas Tree White Puppy. So it's a Christmas tree covered with these cute little dogs and it lights up. Um... Yeah, that's the kind of thing that when you see that, you stop and look. Like, what the heck is that? You sure don't see that every day. Um, anything with a specific dog breed is going to do well because it's just very specific. Um, people who, you know, dog lovers usually have a certain breed that they they love. You know, it's, it's whatever they have or they've raised or they're, um, you know, just have an affinity for a certain breed. Um... You know, cat lovers just kind of love all cats. You know, cats, cat breeds aren't as different looking as dog breeds. But um, the dog lovers I know, I mean, I'm an animal lover, but I don't, um, I just don't have a specific breed I'm crazy about. Um, I had miniature dachshunds at one point, and only because their owner was, um, got called to Iraq to, you know, in the military, and I was like, well, I'll take your dogs. So that's how I ended up with them, and then when he came back, um, guess what? They were attached. We were all attached, and the children were attached, and so we just kept them until they eventually expired. So my point here is that um, dog lovers love their breed, and so when you see stuff that's like a German Shepherd, or a Dalmatian, or a Dachshund, or, um, you know, a golden retriever or whatever it is um, th that usually sells pretty well because people have an affinity for their breed of dog which by the way this is completely unrelated but I was out walking on the trail the other day and I saw the, this most adorable little dog and I was like what is this it's this cute little fluffy thing that was just 
adorable and it looked like a little teddy bear and I was like what is this dog and it was a Pomsky which is a Pomeranian mixed with a husky um, if you're a dog lover go look that up that is the most adorable thing I've ever seen and it's kind of a new breed that has been invented recently but um, it's it's like a small really fluffy looking husky but um, so if I get another dog it may have to be that one <laughs> anyway um, sorry I digress but uh, bottom line here is that $40 items sold for $275 in three hours and I'm sure it helps that we are right here in the Christmas season and somebody probably collects that or that is just like the perfect gift for an owner of a Bichon Frise or a breeder of that breed or whatever it is. So there you go. That was your um, dog breed speech. Okay, now we got Luann again. Bought these at a state sale for $3. Sold for best offer of $100 on Posh Poshmark. Took two days to sell. So she's just showing us what the listing is. They're Birkenstock shoes. I do have a video about this brand. Um, check the link above. That's here on YouTube that's one of my top 100 things to look for are Birkenstocks because um, you know the dirtier the better almost on those you would be shocked at what some of them sell for and the condition they look like but people like them that way these look in really great condition though three dollars sold for a hundred took two days to, to sell okay we've got Tanya again also purchased at Goodwill for $1.99 and sold within a couple of days for asking price, I believe. There wasn't any of this exact one on eBay, so I looked on Amazon and they were for sale there in the 40s, $40 range. And so it is a um, Quicken investment and tax software that she bought for $1.99 and sold for um, 37 bucks with free shipping. So uh, software is so easy to sell. I mean, it's just easy to ship. It's easy to photograph. Not much to it. So if you're not looking at that in the office supplies, check that stuff out. Okay, we've got Ken who found this at a local Goodwill for $5. It powered on in the store and I did further testing at home. Took about a month to sell for $69.95 plus shipping. So this is a $5 investment that sold for 70 bucks. It is a Tivoli Audio Henry Kloss model AM FM radio. It's just a cool looking, um, I'm guessing this is vintage. It looks vintage. He didn't say vintage, but it is vintage. So um, that's really a cool looking item. $5 turned into $70. Took about a month to sell. Okay, um, here is Summer. Good to see you posting, Summer. Um, listed a couple of weeks ago by my awesome VA, Karen. Yes, Karen is a wonderful VA. She does uh, great work. VA meaning virtual assistant, meaning um, the service where you can hire people to list your items for you. Um, $2.99 at Salvation Army. Sold this weekend on my 20% off Thanksgiving sale. So $59.99. It was $74.99. So let's look at the math here. Summer paid for this when she bought it for $2.99. She paid her assistant two bucks to list this. That's how the service works. Um, there's a link below the video if you want to find out more. But um, we require a batch of 20 items and it's $2 per item. We get all your information up front keep a client folder on you so we know exactly how to do your listings and you send in your stuff when you're ready 20 items at a time we have them turned around usually within 48 hours and so that your job is to find and photograph items our job is to get those items listed with search optimized titles um, great descriptions and um, yeah it's, it's a great partnership so her investment in the item was actually $4.99 when you add in the $2 for the VA. 
and she sold it for 60 bucks. And this item may have just sat there for a while until she had time to list it, but she invested the $2 to get it done. And that's how it works. Okay, so here's another one of Summers, $18 at a consignment sale last spring, and got it listed, <laughs> thanks to her VA, sold for $75. So again, her investment in this item is $20 when you add on the fee for the virtual assistant, but it sold for $75. So it got listed and it got sold and she still walked away with um, almost four times her investment. Okay, um, boy, she's got a lot of stuff there. Karen's been busy. Great work, guys. All right, Brian uh, paid about 50 cents per package at a garage sale, so $3 total. Sold for $79.99, took several months. All right, what is this? Um, lot of six, Lemac Sugar and Spice, Frosted Candy Road Straight. It looks like um, somebody said, what are these? Pieces that people will use to build a village display. I've done well with lots of different Lena's pieces, Halloween, Christmas, and other scenes and themes. So, actually, I think he says Lee Max. I must have spell checked him. Um, and he's telling Joy to look on eBay to get an idea of what to look for. But basically, these are pieces that you use to build the little um, holiday villages. He paid 50 cents per package at a garage sale sold for 80 bucks so this is definitely a very specific item that a collector or enthusiast would want but what an odd and unusual and like out of the norm kind of item and that's that's what collectors want okay we've got brian again paid basically three bucks at a garage sale and sold for 100 bucks in a few days going to canada and what is it Vintage Chicago Bulls Michael Jordan number 23 champion jersey for youth. Three bucks sold for a hundred. Going to Canada. And what's the lesson here is uh, ship international because um, there's only 350 million people in the United States and there's what, seven billion in the world? Granted, a few billion of those are in third world countries and won't be buying on eBay, but bottom line is adding international shipping is the one action you can take that will increase your sales dramatically and takes no extra work. So uh, check out my video on that if you're not shipping internationally. Okay, Brian's got a whole bunch of stuff here. He's selling for great money. Um, here's an item, $15 at an estate sale in May, sold for $140 plus shipping. This is a Sony Walkman with a, sp a speaker, dock, remote, and adapter. So $15, and he turned it into $140, took him about six months, but you can't beat that return on investment, even if it is, does take six months. Um, I'm sorry, but Vanguard and Fidelity and all those kind of investment uh, groups, they can't make this kind of money for you. Not with the market today, but when you look at the return on the investment these eBay sellers are making, um, that's how you're going to make your money. And it's not, it's not as volatile as uh, <laughs> having a financial portfolio. Um, I hear you know, my parents' aches and pains about, you know, the market's up this much and it's down this much and, you know, we lost this much money today and I just, you know, I don't want to have to live like that. Um, I look at investing my money in stuff to sell online and it's just, you know, the possibilities are endless and the, the profit margins are endless. You just look at these sales and what people are paying and what stuff sells for in such a small amount of time and it's like obviously you have your investments you have your retirement and all of that but this is such a great supplement to that because it's um, you know it's not limited by what's going on in the market you have so much more control over the more work you put in the more money you're gonna make okay um, 
here's another one from Brian. I always buy these when I see them and wait until I have enough for a nice bundled lot. Probably had a total of twenty to thirty dollars into this lot and sold for hundred ninety nine ninety nine plus shipping. Okay, so thirty dollars and he turned it into two hundred dollars in just a few days. Lot of fourteen tiger nerf laser tag phoenix pieces taggers and shot blasts. So it's a set of like nerf laser tag gun things. Um, 30 bucks turned it into 200 in just a few days. All right. Um, let's do one more from Brian here. 50 cents at a church rummage sale sold for 44.99 in about 18 months. Brady Bunch Kids CD Sealed. Wow, that's something you don't see every day. Um, since the Brady Bunch was way before CDs ever happened, um, this is something that was made at, way after the Brady Bunch was over. Um, 50 cents, and he sold it for $45. But it took a year and a half, but that's okay. He still sold it. Just mix it all in with everything else. Okay, boy, Brian's got a lot of great sales this week. So if you're not in this group, you need to come join and study this thread because there's just so much to learn. Okay, moving along, we've got Megan who bought this at Goodwill for $7.50. Took a couple of months to sell for full price. Let's take a look at what it is. Lennox Union Teal Casserole Dish Serving Bowl Presidential Collection. So that's a very pretty piece. Goodwill $7.50 and she sold it for $67. So again, almost 10 times her investment for picking this item, photographing it, getting it listed. Good job. Okay, we've got Patricia bought a vintage 1980 strawberry shortcake charm bracelet from Salvation Army for $2.99. Sold in 12 hours for full price of $75. Wow. And here's her listing. Vintage strawberry shortcake charm bracelet 1980. Seven charms. What a cute little piece. And this was $2.99. Sold in 12 hours for $75. So that's, wow, what an amazing sale for just a little, a little piece of costume jewelry that's collectible. Okay, we've got Kim who paid, oh Kim, I love your little coffee uh, avatar, avatar there, your little emoji. <laughs> Drinking coffee and posting on Money Making Mondays, that, isn't that the life? Paid $8 in October at Goodwill, sold for $42.90 full price plus shipping. And it is a Retrolicious Mod Cloth Vintage Style Dress. Christmas, yes it is Christmassy. Fit and flare. So that is adorable. Um, $8 sold for $42.90. So about five times your investment, so still a great flip. And then Kim has um, some more stuff here. Let's see what she's got. Let's go to this jacket. Paid $10.81 at Goodwill. Sold for full asking price of $49.90 plus shipping in just a few weeks. And this is Orvis, which is a great um, brand that's been around for a while. It's kind of like L.L. Bean, Land's End. They had a catalog and probably still do. Um, so this is a rugged canvas chore coat barn jacket. So it's, it's a very rugged, durable, outdoorsy, you know, meaning not just to wear like out to dinner, like you're going to do some work in this piece <laughs> on a farm, on a ranch, something like that. Um, 10 bucks and sold for 50. So again, uh, sold for five times her investment. All right, we've got Alicia, paid $2 at a thrift store, listed for $48.42, took best offer $40 plus shipping, sold in six days. And this is a Pendleton again, women's skirt suit, red and green Christmas plaid. 
that is definitely retro. So two dollars and basically sold for 50. So what 25 times your investment? Oh, I'm sorry, it sold for 40. So 20 times your investment. It sold in six days. And I like you, the way you have it displayed there with the the pieces, um, the skirt hung up there, and then the jacket on the mannequin. You can really see both pieces perfectly. So that's a great flip. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. Alicia had a lot of sales, and Kim had a lot of sales. Um, let's look at this one. $4.99 at Goodwill sold for best offer of $50 in two days. And this is a exclusively Missuk, which is a high-end brand. Large open cardigan jack, jacket striped long sleeve. Um, looks like spell chip got you there on the white W-H-O-T-E instead of I-T-E. Um, but that happens. Or maybe it was just a typo. I don't know. Um, five bucks turned into fifty dollars in two days so ten times your investment there great sale okay we've got D who found eight of these plates in different colors at a thrift store for ten dollars total this is the third one I've sold at fifty dollars plus shipping took ten days to sell let's see what this is block Germany chromatics red lavender dinner plate and then a number mid-century dish so she bought eight of these for ten dollars total so what like a dollar fifty a piece something like that um, and sold this one for fifty bucks and it's just a cool looking plate very fun okay let's see if we can find some other people down here Okay, here's an interesting item, Allie. This wasn't a huge sale, but it came out of a huge box of scrapbooking supplies I bought at a church rummage sale for $10. So far, I've sold three items from the box, around $40, with still tons left to sell. This was um, a scrapbooking spray, seven bucks. But she said she bought a huge box of scrapbooking supplies that she's listing individually. So if you want to take the time to work through all that stuff, you can definitely make money on these huge lots that people are getting rid of because, you know, one of the things you can look for when people are downsizing is their urgency to downsize, whether they're donating stuff to thrift stores, you know, for church sales, whatever, or having their own sale. Um, there is a sense of urgency sometimes if you know their house is sold and they've got to get out or the owner of the home is older and they have to go to assisted living or they're having medical issues and they've got to get that person moved so when I had my very temporary job in the real estate world doing the marketing and some other things I saw this a lot um, there the sense of urgency of selling the property or the home or the condo and you've got to get the stuff out of there. So they're, they're at a point in their mind where they're focused on getting that person moved or themselves or, or whoever. So a lot of times, you know, you're going to see these great deals because you as the reseller, that's your job. That's what you do all day is you list things for sale and you have time and the infrastructure in your life to deal with all this stuff. Whereas somebody who's moving or getting downsized and has sold their home and, and like they didn't think it through, like you're, you should have like cleaned it out before you put it on the market. But a lot of times it doesn't work that way. And people think they think they have much less to deal with than they actually do. So when they start going through everything and it's like, oh my God, it is so overwhelming. How am I ever going to get all this stuff out of here? What am I going to do? And then you know we come upon their sales and you see these you know big boxes of whatever it's Avon stuff or craft supplies or whatever it is and they're just in a mindset to get rid of it so as resellers we have the time and the space and the forethought to be able to work through this mountain of stuff 
we're in a position to do it whereas the person who's downsizing is not. Okay, this is some retail arbitrage. That's what she means by RA. Bought these from Woot for $14.99, have been selling them between $39 and $49 a piece plus shipping. And they are Converse Men's Chuck Taylor All-Star Tie-Dye High Top Sneakers. So Woot is a site where you can get deals. It's W-O-O-T dot com, I think. And um, they just, it's, it's all kind of overstocks and stuff like that. And you can buy, I've bought things for five bucks and flipped them for 25, you know, cool flashlights or um, I tried it out when that site first came around gosh it's probably been eight to ten years ago but um, so if you are looking for ways to buy things online that might be an option for you okay now we've got Max who bought this plush for $3.99 sold it for $87 with free shipping on Mercari and it is a jumbo stitch um, from Lilo and Stitch, the Disney movie, from the Disney store. So four bucks into eighty-seven dollars in two months. Can't beat that. Okay, um, here's another one from Kim Smith. Bought at Goodwill in March for ten dollars and eighty-one cents. Sold for best offer forty-one dollars. Buyer asked for lower shipping rates, so I changed shipping to medium flat rate box. Maybe that's why they didn't sell faster. The shipping was high, which I didn't catch. Okay, yeah, those medium flat rate boxes are great for some shoes. So check that out as an option if you're selling a lot of shoes. These are North Face boots. So she bought them for 10 and sold them for 41. So still made, uh, sold them for four times her cost. All right, let's do a couple more and then I'm going to wrap it up. Um, let me see some people here that we haven't talked about. Okay, there's Hydrin. Hey, Hydrin, good to see you posting. Hydrin is working towards um, retirement and doing this full time. She lives in Connecticut. I've spoken with her on the phone. And what a nice lady she is. Um, there's Mark Sherrill who posts all the time. Let's see what he's got this week. Paid two dollars at an estate sale, sold for thirty-five plus nine dollars shipping. And this is vintage Wamsutta Super Kale plus King fitted sheets. So sheets, two dollars sold for thirty-five plus nine dollars shipping. Great. Um, Mark Mark's got a lot of cool stuff. What is this? Um, oh, some looks like some beer bottles. That's cool. Okay, here's Suzanne Keene, my friend and sorority sister out in Dallas, Texas. Purchased this first edition, second printing copy of Julia Child, Mastering the Art of French Cooking at a thrift store for $3.99. Wasn't in the greatest condition, but still sold for best offer of $1.75. Yes, this is definitely a bolo in the book department. Um, Julia Child, first edition, I'm sorry, First edition, second printing, 1961 cookbook. So Suzanne paid $4 and sold for $175 because it's old, it's collectible. Um, and just FYI, it's she's got this right. It's Julia Child. There is no S on the end unless you are making it possessive. Um, I see this all the time on listings. People just assume her last name is Childs with an S, but it's not. Okay, um, let's see a couple more here. Tina paid a dollar at Goodwill, sold for $25 in three weeks. I've got a pair of these up for sale myself. Um, Vibram Five Fingers. These can be like for running or climbing. It's like a sock with a rubbery sole on it for outdoor stuff. And she paid a dollar, sold for $25 in three weeks. That is a great flip. All right, and let's do one more here. Dawn, we're going to pick on you. I had the pleasure of meeting Dawn when I was in Orlando and um, had a lovely dinner with her and some other sellers. That was really a fun night. 
So she paid a dollar at a warehouse estate sale, sold within two weeks for $59.99. Let's see what it is here. It is something I have no idea what it is. <laughs> Orpen Series Parallel Battery Switch, Model C, Automatic Battery. Um, okay, so a dollar sold for $59. I'm just curious, Dawn, like, did you know what this was? Do you have experience in the electronics, electrical um, industry? Um, how did you know? Or did you just look it up because it was in the box? Because I don't know that I'd ever pick up anything like that because I would be clueless. So let me know, Dawn. Um, okay, Tracy, you're the last one. Tracy Valentine is my friend that lives close by in the same area I live in Georgia, but we've never run into each other or met. <laughs> Found this the week before Thanksgiving for $5 at a thrift store after several much lower offers. It sold for asking price on Black Friday of $55. So what is it? Fisher Price Nativity Advent Calendar. Isn't that adorable? And Again, probably sold because we're getting into the Christmas season here, so perfect timing. Um, oh, Lynette commented, sold one just like that for $50 earlier this month. And Lynette, it was a pleasure meeting you also in Orlando. Um, $5, sold it for $55. So 10 times her investment. Okay, I'm going to stop there and... Um, Again, invite you to my Facebook group to read all these posts and add your sales. Um, links to the premium library and virtual assistant service are below, so check those out. And as always, I appreciate your comments. Please like this video and subscribe if you are not already. Thanks so much for watching and have a profitable and productive day on eBay. Bye.